Hey guys, Joe, just doing some um, TFT Dash um, research here. Uh, quite a few um, people have asked if the TFT Dash could be made available for the Phaser 600. Um, so now, you know, um, what better time than any? We're all in lockdown and isolation, so what better time to do some research, eh? So um, I've got here uh, some clocks. So right here, I've, I've got the Phaser 1000 clocks, which actually comes from my bike. And I've got here a set of Phaser 600 clocks, which I've um, uh, got from eBay. Um, and the main purpose of this task was to see, firstly, is the wiring the same? Um, because obviously, looking at the back of the Phaser 600 clocks, the, the connector's identical. But is the wiring the same? And I've discovered that, yes, the wiring is the same but the programming is largely different. So um, in doing some research to see if I can make the TFT dash available for the 600, it's certainly possible. The wiring seems to be the same, but it looks like some programming changes will be needed. So um, I've basically just got some test, uh, just a test rig hooked up here. So these are the phase 1000 clocks. I've got hooked up here. At the moment, you can see it's displaying an, a rev counter of 7,000 RPM. The speed is currently registering 60 miles an hour. And I've got this hooked up to basically a test rig, which I created. Um, so this little box here um, just basically simulates a bike. It simulates the phase 1000, simulates its inputs to the clocks. Um, and here I have a signal generator which can simulate different signals in order to get the speed and rev counters to display different things. So um, the interesting thing uh, which I thought I'd share with you now is in order to get the rev counter displaying 7000 RPM um, and if you look at the yellow I'm kind of having I'm having to output a signal of 228 Hertz and you can see on the scope here, um, that's actually looking at the wrong thing. That's looking at the speedometer, so ignore me there. Don't look at the scope. So, on the yellow um, writing there, you can see I'm outputting a signal of 228 hertz, which is causing the RPM display to display a reading of 7,000. Now, earlier I did this on the on the 600 clocks, and I found it to be a bit different so I, I took note of values and you can see on the 600 clocks I had to send a signal of 110 Hertz in order for it to display a value of a 7000 RPM and uh, I sent it to signal of 56 Hertz in order for it to read 60 miles an hour similarly on a thousand clocks in order for it to display a, um, a signal of 60 miles an hour as you can see on the signal generator here, I'm having to send a signal of basically 1.57 kilohertz. And you can see that on the scope there, which is roughly reading a value between uh, 1.050 and 59-ish, which is, yeah, which is what I'm generating is 1.057. So that's the signal I'm sending to the speedometer here in order for it to register 60 miles an hour. So that's a massive difference uh, from the phase 1000 to the to the phase 600 to how um, the different signal it, it's expecting in order to register at the same speed. So um, yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd share that with you guys, just doing some research. Um, obviously it's looking very possible to develop the, to, to, to get the TFT dash working for the phase 600. I just thought I'd do this test in order to determine the software changes that might be needed. So at the moment, it looks like the speed sensor on the 600 operates remarkably differently to the uh, the speed sensor on the on the thousand. Um, from what I've read, the speed the speed sensor on the 600 is uh, mounted on the front wheel, um, and the speed sensor on speed sensor on thousand is mounted on the gearbox. So, and that's actually going to be looking at uh, basically triggering every time a single tooth passes over the the hall effect sense hall effect sensor whereas on the um on the 600 
uh, it's probably going to be um, registering a pulse every time there's a single rotation of the wheel. So that might explain these values I'm seeing. 56 hertz for 60 miles an hour, as opposed to just over 1,000 hertz for 60 miles an hour on 1,000. So, yeah, um, some math is required there, but just thought I'd share um, with you guys um, just the research that's needed in order to get the uh, this this um, TFT dash to operate on the two bikes uh, nicely. On the good side, um, the other things that's obviously uh, on the dash here, we've got the fuel gauge. It looks like in order to send, I'm sending the same signal, so the fuel float seems to operate within the same range of values. That's a good thing. Um, see these switches here. Um, so if I if I turn on the neutral, basically, if I turn on the neutral switch, that will cause the neutral light to light up. What I'm doing there is I'm grounding the neutral wire, which is faking what the bike does. Um, what I've noticed is the oil level light is reversed. So on the thousand, um, to get the oil light to go out, you have to ground it. But on the 600, to get it to go out, it can't be grounded. Um, you have to not ground it. So again, not a problem. The wire's the same. It's just a software change. These three switches here just simulate high beam. So if I switch that on, a high for high beam, and then a high for left, and a high for right. Um, the other things, obviously the thousand clocks is responsible for turning on the fan on the bike. Uh, I need to investigate whether that's the same on the, on the 600. Um, because I have a little LED indicator here to tell me if the clocks are turning on the fan, but that didn't light up on the uh, on the 600. So I need to study the wiregram, wiring diagram just to see if that's um, that's the case. But um, yeah, um, TFT dash for the Phaser 600 in progress.